Awesome. Um, last year was my first, I haven't been a dirt racer my whole life. Last year was my first year on asphalt. And the ARCA series, the, we're really looking at where we wanted to go with my career next. And obviously with the, with the final place we want to be is in NASCAR. And looking at the ARCA series, it's a place where we're driving the, the big stock cars, 3,400 pound stock cars. There, we got plenty of horsepower. We got the same kind of horsepower as the cup cars run. Um, we're running on the biggest thing that I want to do, and this what Nelson's talking about is being able to get on these racetracks, being able to get on Michigan, Texas, and places like that that we go and race. And uh, it, it's been a it's been a incredible stepping stone for me. It's developed me. It's developed me to the point where I had the opportunity to get in the in the junior motorsports ride, and and <clears throat> it's it's been awesome. I uh, I don't think. Every, like Nelson was saying, every time we get in the race cars, we're learning something new each and every time, whether it be, whether it be learning how to feel the car and translate the information back to the crew chief to, to make the car exactly how we need it, learning, learning what kind of feel we need to have in the car at the start of a run to be competitive at the end of a run, and just even stuff like learning what kind of feel you need in your car in an afternoon practice going into a night race. So there, there's nothing, nothing out there. Someone can sit there and tell you all these things all day long. But there's nothing, there's nothing that's going to beat track time and seat time, and just being able to, to do this and, and feel it all. So I, I honestly, I wouldn't have an opportunity at Junior Motorsports right now if it wasn't for the Arca Series. Okay. Mike. And then. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Steve, I was going to ask you, what are some of the challenges that you and your team face in bringing a car to Michigan setup-wise compared to maybe some of the other tracks? The biggest thing we're fighting right now, like we said, my uh, our, our strongest point has been the intermediate tracks. And the, this is our first time with that new side window in the car. And we had, our, we had our program absolutely perfected on all these places. Now we just threw a whole new bone in it. So it's... Uh, I don't think it's going to be that hard to figure it out. It, it's just a matter of, of doing a little bit of fine tuning. There's, I, I think we just kind of came across exactly what we need to get our program right back to where it was before and be right up front with the rest of them. But I would say the biggest thing, going from a short track to, to an intermediate track, it's there's so much more arrow involved. There's you're you're sitting on you're sitting on you're doing a lot more coil binding here than you do at a short track, say. Um, and just, just finding exactly the sweet spot for all that because it's so critical that you have it absolutely perfect. Mike? I know some of the uh, fans, how you found the American stock car fans and uh, compared perhaps to uh, uh, people in Europe and South America and, and uh, you know, Australia, Asia? I would say, I would say that they're all very similar, they're all fanatic, they're all, they all love the sport, they all love the drivers, the teams, the cars. Uh, I think the only difference in Europe is that they have much more access to to what they like, you know, to the cars. They can be much closer. They can take pictures with whoever the driver's idol is, and uh, I think that's that's a very healthy thing, and that's that's very good for them, you know. Um, it's, it's nothing. It's not a problem for any of the drivers, I would say. And I think it's something that that Europe should, you know, open their mind a little bit and be more 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 open with, you know. I know. F1 is, is, you know, if they start opening the gates for F1, it's going to be a bit crowded. But uh, still, you know, I think one of the reasons that NASCAR are so successful is that they treat the fans and they treat the people that love the sport so well. And uh, that's, that's an important thing that I think everybody should learn with, with NASCAR. Steve, I had, <coughs> excuse me, I had drivers tell me that went from dirt to asphalt. They say, you know, I wish I would have done the switch because dirt, I had learned uh, maybe a few too many bad habits on dirt. <laughs> you should ask Billy that question. <laughs> We've had a couple big arguments. <laughs> I I think the dirt has, has definitely, definitely helped my ra helped my asphalt racing. Um, you're right, there, there's a lot of things you learn on the dirt that will absolutely kill you in the asphalt. And when we started out the year last year, there was a lot of things that I thought I, I had from dirt racing, a lot of the, the attributes that I had at a dirt driver that would really kind of put me a step above the rest of the guys on the asphalt stuff and sure enough it, it killed me and mm -hmm. about three or four races into the season like Daytona you throw that one away that doesn't that's not that's not real racing if you want it's racing but you know what I mean there but uh, I when when we finally got our program turned around last year I just had to take everything I knew from dirt racing and throw it away and the biggest thing that I kept from dirt racing and the thing that that's helped me the most in asphalt racing from the dirt racing is just the car control you can uh, you can get yourself in some bad situations and, and drive out of them.
like it just because we do it in dirt every single corner so but everything else all the all the driving as far as how you use your feet how you use the brakes how you how you keep the car loaded up i had to completely throw all that out the window and start completely over so if you had to, if you had to do it again would you have maybe transitioned <coughs> to asphalt earlier or if, would you have done anything differently maybe i i definitely would have um there's like we all know, it's a it's a it's a real small window, and when you can get your opportunity and get up to the next level, and every year it seems like the kids are getting younger and younger. Like I feel like an old man here. I'm 26 <laughs> years old only, but uh, it's uh, I definitely think I would have tried to get on the asphalt sooner. I definitely if I, I would never give up my dirt racing. If I had to do it all over again, I would definitely still do all the dirt racing I did. But I would have uh, I would have really liked to have been able to get on the asphalt sooner and just just start learning that and and. There, there's a lot of lessons you got to learn. You got to learn them the hard way. You got to learn them on the racetrack. And I wish uh, that's one thing I wish I would have been able to, to do before I got to the ARCA series, more so in some late model stuff or, or stuff like that beforehand. Okay, we'll wrap it up right here, and then we're going to cycle some other drivers. Just for both of you, is there a NASCAR driver, like past or present, that either one of you, you know, when you see him on TV, you follow and you go, I want to, you know, you're at where you're at now, but you look at this one particular guy or particular guys and you say, I want to, that's what, you know, I want to, you know, uh, image him or mirror him, or is there somebody you kind of look up to or follow in NASCAR? Anybody that, uh, that sticks out? Or you guys kind of, when you're at your place, you're like your own guy and you don't really pay attention? Well, I mean, it's difficult to say, but I mean, I cheer for one of the drivers there just because of how he treated me in the beginning when I arrived here. Right. When, I, when I first was not my, uh, my first, uh, it was in Daytona. I don't, I don't remember if it was it was if it was ARC or if it was the, the truck series. But I was laying in, inside the truck, inside the hauler, where in the front bar where, where the computers are, with, right. with the engineers, and just hang out there because I didn't know anybody. And uh, Kurt Busch came all the way from his paddock, all the way into our paddock, into my truck without knowing anybody, and came to look for me and said, "Look, you're more than welcome around here whenever you want to come by." I mean, and that was amazing. I mean, I, when I saw him, I couldn't believe I was seeing him right. there. And uh, and then he sat there for, for five, ten minutes talking with me a little bit about the track and this and that. And uh, it was amazing. I bet from that point on, you probably felt kind of like a weight off your shoulders. Like, hey, there's people around here. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, I mean, obviously that's, I'm not talking only about him. I mean, 95%, I mean, everybody that I've, that I've met around here, everybody have been, have, has been very supportive and always helping me. and always trying, you know, to give their best support. But I mean, you wouldn't see that in Europe. Somebody leaving the F1 paddock to go to the GP2 <laughs> paddock or something, right. and uh, saying, well, come over and I'll show you a few things. I mean, that would never happen. So I mean, uh, definitely I was very happy when he won the All-Star race uh, last week. For me, it's kind of a, it's a hands down thing. Carl Edwards is, he's kind of taken me under his wing from a few years back. I always, I always really looked up to him before I even got, got the opportunity to meet him. Uh, we all know this is a this is an expensive sport to be involved in. It's a sponsor-driven sport, and with with my background, I don't come from uh, from a whole bunch of money to to be able to have this opportunity. And and Carl really believed in me from the get-go, and and kind of the same deal. He came over to the dirt track in Volusia, and down in Daytona, and just really liked me and liked what I was doing in my race car and believed in me, and has helped me all all along the way. So and just the way he carries himself and stuff like that. I'm really true to, I'm, I'm always going to be my own person, and sometimes it's probably going to get me in trouble, but uh, it's, uh, for, for someone that I would kind of idolize and really look up to, it would definitely be Carl Edwards. Wow. Let's talk about your morning. Uh, Rob, you first. Well, uh, our car is pretty solid. We uh, just work, it feels good, it feels fast, we're just working on uh, getting those times down where we need it to be. Uh, we're definitely making progress, and I think we got a good plan for the afternoon get up in the top 10 there where we think we should be. So so definitely uh, good so far and hopefully better later on. Joey? Uh, so far not a bad morning. Um, I haven't been feeling all that well lately, so uh, just kind of been taking it easy. But uh, car's been solid, real good. Uh, we started off with the same stuff we brought here last year, and uh, now my crew chief, Harold Holly, started to uh, experiment with some stuff. So. We're uh, just taking it one step at a time, um, getting ready to uh, roll out our second car and shake that down right after lunch. Okay, questions? <laughs>